If a web application returns different responses when valid or invalid usernames are provided, this leaves the application vulnerable to username enumeration and password brute force attacks. During this video, we see this scenario in action. For the purpose of this exercise, we use a lab from Web Security Academy lab series called Username Enumeration via Different Responses. And you can find the link to this lab in the video description. This lab has provided two word lists for the candidate username and passwords, which we will use for the user enumeration and password brute force attacks. And you can find the links to these word lists in the video description. To solve this lab, we need to find a set of valid user credentials and log in into the user account. All right, let's get started by clicking on Access the Lab. In the application homepage, we click on My Account from the top right corner of the screen. And as we see, we have been redirected to the login page. So we need to have a valid set of credentials to access this page. Since we don't have an account on this application, let's see if we can manage to find a username and password of a valid account by using username enumeration and password brute force techniques. First, we turn on burp intercept, then fill out username and password fields with random values and click on login. Looking at the HTTP post request for the login function, we see the username and password parameters in the request body with the values that we just submitted. Let's forward this request. By inspecting the HTTP response, we see a message, invalid username. Now we are interested to see if the application returns a different response if we provide a valid username. We need to launch a brute force attack and submit a set of potential usernames to see if we can find a valid username. From the HTTP history, we choose the HTTP request for the login function. Then we right click on the request and choose send to intruder. In the intruder tab, we configure an attack for user enumeration. For the attack type, we choose a sniper. And for the payload positions, first we clear the positions that Burp Intruder has automatically highlighted. Then we choose the username parameter value in the request body and click on add. So far we have selected the attack type and the payload position. Now we go to the payload tab to configure the list of candidate usernames. We only have one set of payloads, which is the list of usernames. So the payload set would be one and the payload type simple list. For the payload options, we need to provide the list of usernames. We copy the username word list from the lab description link and paste them here. Looking at the payload count, we see the number of provided usernames and the burp intruder will submit the same number of requests. Now that we have configured the intruder, we are ready to launch the attack and start the username enumeration. From the top right corner of the window, we click on start attack. A new window pops up and the attack begins. Once the attack is completed, we go to the attack results table. Since the application returns different messages to valid and invalid usernames, we are interested to see if any of the HTTP responses has returned a different message. To quickly find a different response, we can check the length column. To sort the results based on their length, we click on the column header. As we see only the length of one entry is different, we choose this entry and go to the response tab. By inspecting the HTML within the HTTP response, we notice a different message, incorrect password. Therefore, based on the application response, we found a valid username. Let's copy the username from the request tab, then close the current window and go back to the intruder. So far, we completed the first step, which was the user enumeration, and we managed to find a valid username. For the next step, we need to find the password. So we will use Burp Intruder to configure the password brute force attack. In the Positions tab, first we clear the current positions. Then we replace the username parameter value with the valid username that we just found. Finally, for the payload position, we choose the password value and click on Add. Now we go to the Payloads tab. We leave the payload sets configuration as it is, and in the payload options, first we clear the current list. Then we copy the password list from the lab description link and paste them here. 
We have now configured the password brute force attack, so we can go ahead and start the attack. Once the attack is completed, we go to the results tab, and by looking at the status column, we see one login request has received 302 HTTP response code. And by looking at the response tab, we see the user has been redirected to the My Account page, indicating that the provided password was correct. From the request tab, we copy the username and password values and close the intruder window. Now that we have found a username and password for an account on this application, we go back to the web browser. In the login page, we fill out the username and password fields with the credentials that we copied from Burp Intruder and click on login. We get the message that we have solved the lab and as we can see, we are now logged in into the application. In this video, we saw how an attacker could perform user enumeration and password brute force attacks on a vulnerable application to find valid user credentials. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like and if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I upload new videos every week.